Hobbies are for the frivolous. I am an overachieving, non-TV watching, inbox zero, chained to my chair, type A personality, workaholic. There is no time for hobbies. Every day, I set a timer on my phone and I race against the clock. Time, as we've been told, is money. In 2012, when I was pregnant with our son, I didn't let a little thing like pregnancy slow me down. I pushed harder to achieve my goals, and I finished my graduate degree here at Columbia. As I walked to get my diploma, my long, light blue gown obscured my seven-month pregnant belly. A few years later, I was working full-time and taking evening coding classes, and I worked through the night to launch my first business. I had three high-end clients out of the gate. Success. But not even a month later, on September 18th of 2016, I picked up a phone call from my obstetrician. You see, recently I had suffered two back-to-back -back miscarriages, and I was expecting this call for what I thought was a routine biopsy exam. Something we were doing just in case. I was told it was not necessary. But just in case, that little lump that I'd convinced myself was a clogged milk duct was something more. Cancer. My, thirst, my first thought was, no, 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 no. I don't have time for this. What do you mean call my surgeon? I don't have a surgeon. I don't have time to go to the doctor. I'm healthy. I feel fine. Are you sure malignant means cancer? I think I need a second opinion. So I got a second opinion, but I didn't yet understand what cancer would do to my life. I spoke with several surgeons before finding one kind enough to explain the severity of my little lump, which over the course of only a few weeks had grown from the size of a pea to larger than a walnut. I would need chemotherapy, surgery, and radiation. My life stopped. October was a blur. There were certain points I didn't want to walk, talk, smile, or leave my bed. I was really short-tempered with my husband and son. What would happen to my family? What will happen to me? And what about all the time I would lose? My business definitely wouldn't take off now. November 2nd was my first chemotherapy. And it took seven hours, seven, seven hours of scrolling through my phone, wallowing in self-pity, thinking and rethinking all of the things in my life that I'd done that brought me here. But after all that time scrolling through my phone and just being in self-pity, I thought, F this. I can't just sit here and mope. I need to find a way to take these moments back. And I hit cancer back with an air guitar. So when you think of air guitar, you might think of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Excellent! Or maybe Tom Cruise in the movie Risky Business as he slides on the highway and he uh, is in his underwear and he jumps up, up and down on the table playing the air guitar. Or more recently, actor Bradley Cooper showed off his air guitar skills on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Air guitar is what the crazy kids do while jumping on the bed and listening to ACDC. But you know what? I'm one of those crazy kids. But because of my mm, mildly extreme type A personality, I do air guitar competitively. But, but competitive air guitar is a little bit different. In competitive air guitar, each competitor comes to the stage and they light it up using their character and charisma to create a 60-second face-melting performance. So, some of the fun air guitar characters include Bjorn Tarak, Shreddy Mercury, William Ocean, Betty B. Good, who famously lost a toe while competing, Mom Jeans Genie, and a lot of air guitarists use air in their name, like New York hometown hero and two-time world champion Aristotle, who is kind of the Air Jordan of air guitar. Because of his success, Sports Illustrated did a complete article on him and the air guitar scene last summer. So, then there's me, Twisted Sister. 
So we're a fun group, and we love air guitar, and we compete against each other every summer. And you know, we understand that air guitar is not for everyone, but I loved it. This has been my hobby now for almost 10 years, but I will say, this isn't something I thought I would continue to do. I thought this was something I would outgrow. I thought I'd already reached the pinnacle. I made it in 2014 to the world championship of air guitar in Olu, Finland. And I was just at the top. It's like being a rock star, you guys. It's the best with no instruments. <laughs> yeah. So after finishing uh, my graduate degree and becoming a multitasking mom, I decided that I needed to start on my serious career. And I decided to retire my air guitar. But the thought of suspending my serious life reality, if for only those 60 seconds, had me strapping it back on and it would pull me back to the air guitar stage. So before cancer, air guitar was just a fun night out and a way of expressing myself and seeing my friends. But post-cancer, air guitar helped me reimagine my approach to treatment and helped me smile and laugh at my surreal situation. It brought joy and connection back to my life. For me to begin to process what was happening to me, I needed to stop being a taskmaster for a while. And as we do on the air guitar stage, I needed to reimagine what was possible. I wanted to rethink, what could I do in my little cubicle of a chemo chair? I came up with the Glam Rock Chemo Project. I invited friends to come to my chemotherapy, and they gifted crowns and wigs and gowns, and we had fun. We laughed, we made goofy photos, we totally rocked out. So, as it turns out, hobbies, are not for the frivolous. How is it that this silly hobby was the best thing that, that happened to me? Why have we forgotten the value of hobbies in our serious, grown-up, career-focused lives? So, for clarity, I'd like to ask, what is a hobby? So, a hobby is anything you do regularly for the pure joy of it. Examples can be fishing, running, bicycling, any artistic pursuits, stamp collecting, gardening, reading, even travel. Basically, any activity that you do on a regular basis can be a hobby for pure joy. But the problem with our capitalistic society is that we only measure the quantitative data, and we don't measure the qualitative data or the quality of our lives. So basically, if you got paid for it, that effort was valuable and useful. But if you didn't get paid, it was hobby behavior and a pure distraction. Basically, we can't measure beauty, intelligence, courage, and compassion, the things that make life living. In short, GDP does not measure well-being. But I know for a fact that hobbies have real value to my friends. Because of the tight-knit air guitar community, I know specifically that this hobby has helped my friends overcome PTSD, depression, stage fright, and social anxiety. We are a group of people that meet only once per year, but we stay connected online and we help each other through life's ups and downs. The wonderful community centered around this hobby was a group of people that I could lean on, and I did not expect this. In particular, the women of Air Guitar were the first people that I told about my cancer outside of my immediate friends and family. They helped me think of ways that I could hit back and gave me the courage to do so. After my diagnosis, I still deal with the constant fear of recurrence or the cancer spreading somewhere in my body. It is important to find a group of people that understand your circumstances. And I went to several cancer survivor retreats, and I met other survivors like me. Of course, I introduced them to air guitar. And in speaking with them and learning about their stories and how they cope, it turned out one woman started quilting, another created lip sync videos, another started cycling, one charcoal drawings, another started a nonprofit, one a music festival, others turned to gardening, art, ultimate frisbee, singing, running, party planning, the list goes on. It turns out almost everyone I met chose their own way 
of finding connection with themselves and sharing their experience with others. In particular, my survivor friend Molly, the one that did the series of lip sync videos, she shared with me that our interest in hobbies and creative pursuits is an example of opposite action therapy. The feelings that came with diagnosis were anger, fear, and stress related. And by employing a creative pursuit or hobby, we're doing, ex doing something that employs completely opposite reactions. So let's say we're in a social situation and you're introducing yourself to someone for the first time. You'll probably very easily say, hey, I'm so-and-so, and I do this and such, and I'm in this role at this company. And we have no problem talking about what we do for a living. But if I were to ask you about your hobbies, you might hesitate. We live and breathe our work. My hobbies were the lifeline that I pulled to bring myself up out of self-pity and sadness. As I've gotten older, I thought I needed to stifle my quirky creative side. And I had this notion that I should grow up, but not anymore. Now, I believe my artistic quirky side is me. And I just happen to be a chain to my chair, type A personality, workaholic. And in this culture that drives us to work around the clock, I encourage you to do something silly or find a hobby or a creative pursuit that you do just because it brings you joy. And, well, you definitely don't need a cancer diagnosis to do this. Anyone who has a, any type of crisis goes through something similar to what I did, whether it's an emotional crisis, a personal crisis, a medical crisis. We're wrapped up in our everyday lives, school, career, relationships. Questions like, should I get married, buy a house, have children? But when we're dealing with a crisis, all of these things are on hold. And so, right now, I'd like to invite you to participate in my favorite hobby, air guitar. So if you would, could you all please stand up? I need to take off these shoes while you're standing up, because I tried to practice this, I almost fell down, and I promise not to break a toe, but here we go. Yes, so get a little bit of space. I'm going to do a quick air guitar demo, and we are going to get started. Make sure you don't bump your neighbor. So, all right, here we go. So, we are going to rock out to a 60-second track by Andrew W.K., before we do that, though, let's talk about what we're going to do with our body and our hands. Take one of your hands, make an OK, kind of relax it a little. This is going to be your strumming hand, your picking hand. And you can be a righty or a lefty, doesn't matter. All good in air guitar. So your other arm is going to be out there, but not like you're holding a sack of potatoes, like you're holding a their guitar, right? And so now you've got your air guitar, but you've got to remember, this isn't a real guitar. You can do whatever you want. You could tap with your fingers. You could flip both hands and play the guitar. You could flip behind your head. Yes, you could play back here. You could even throw it around the room like a boomerang. See what I'm saying? Air guitar, baby. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the track as every air guitar, guitar competitor does by pointing to the sky. But we've got to do it together to make sure they cue the music. So we're going to count on three, two, one, and then point to the sky like your life depends on it. Ready? Are you ready? Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Three, two, one. Ah, ah, ah. 